Good morning. Happy Reformation to everyone this morning. Thank you for joining us. I welcome everyone who's joining online, too. As always, please take a moment during the service today to fill out the Connect card either in your pew or under the menu tab if you're online. I don't know about you, but um, if you're like me, you're getting a lot more mail now than you normally do, and phone calls, things like that. And it seems like things like, like truth-telling and freedom are kind of on the minds of people as we get close to, to an election. And interestingly, uh, Jesus today speaks to us about those things, about truth and freedom. And he says that he has them both. And when we hold to his word, then we have them too. So that will be our focus today, that Jesus says the truth sets us free. God bless our Reformation celebration. Everything that you need for the service will be on the screens.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in this Reformation service, God again delivers to us love and forgiveness, power to be his people, and resolve to share his precious gospel of forgiveness with all people. We are not ashamed of the gospel. You were dead in your transgressions and sins, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Jesus said, This is what is written that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Jesus said, If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Brothers and sisters, we are not ashamed of the gospel, yet sometimes we live and act as if we are ashamed. Let us repent of our sins, rejoice in the comfort of God's abundance pardoned, and recommit ourselves to the tasks he gives us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit, and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, our refuge and strength, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word, protect and comfort them in all temptations, defend them against all their enemies, and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from the Old Testament, from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The old covenant of the law could only tell people how to act, but it couldn't actually create the desire to, to willingly and freely do so. The new covenant of grace actually transforms people's hearts so that they freely and also joyfully follow God's will. The days are coming, declares the Lord, <clears throat> when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Uh, Paul continues this idea that we are hearing about in our first lesson, um, especially dealing with the topic of this religious idea of circumcision. And Paul encourages his people to stand firm in the freedom that we have in Christ. Paul writes, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson comes from John chapter 8, verses 31 to 36. This also serves as the basis for our message this morning. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We join together in confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue at the hymn of the day. You may be seated.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As Pastor Walter mentioned, the message today is based on the gospel lesson that we just heard from John chapter 8. We begin with prayer. Lord, bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. May they be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends in Jesus, our Savior, Almost exactly 505 years ago, a young German monk named Martin Luther posted 95 statements on the church door in Wittenberg, Germany. And he did that, setting forth those statements as kind of a basis for having a scriptural debate. Through the study of God's word, he had concluded that What the church of his day was teaching, what they were saying, simply wasn't in the Bible. Especially distressing to him was the church's position that for a certain sum of money, you could actually purchase forgiveness. Not just for yourself, but for for other people too, and even people who had died. And so on October 31st, 1517, historians tell us that the Lutheran or sometimes more commonly known as the Protestant Reformation, began. And once a year, Lutheran churches like ours will set aside a worship service like this to commemorate the Reformation, how God in his grace worked through a man like like Martin Luther to restore the truth of the gospel to the church. But we don't turn this into a, like this, proud, chest pounding, I'm a Lutheran kind of a thing, and and nor do we make it our our business to bash or denounce other denominations or the denomination in which Luther grew up. We're here today to celebrate the anniversary and, and to simply say thank you to God for the gift of his word, the word which which reveals his son who has saved us. And rejoice that that the Lord revived the pure teaching and preaching of that good news back in Luther's day, so that still today, like Luther and like so many others, we can live in the freedom of the gospel. And that's what Jesus talks to us about this morning, living in that freedom of the gospel. He says that the truth will set you free. Free because not everyone knows that they're a slave. In fact, you can live the majority or all of your life being a slave and not really know it. This is Frederick Douglass. He was born into slavery back in the the 1800s. And shortly after he was born, he was sold to a woman who bought his body and his life. And like so many slaves, he was terribly mistreated. He was beaten, and he was abused. But many years later, he said something interesting in his autobiography. He said that as he looked back on his childhood, that whole time being mistreated, he said this, I didn't know I was a slave until I found out I couldn't do the things I wanted. Sometimes people can live their whole lives being a slave and and not know it. Jesus met some people like that in our reading. He was looking at at people that had listened to him preach and teach, and, and they believed that he was the one that God had promised to send into the world. And Jesus said, so if you keep on holding to the things that I'm telling you through the things that I am teaching you, then you're, you're not just going to have truth, you're going to have freedom. And that didn't make any sense to them. And they said, we're Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? And then Jesus gave that answer that maybe struck a chord with you when you heard it read earlier. Very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. 
When Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, he's, he's, he's like, perk up, <laughs> listen up. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And Jesus doesn't mean that if, if somebody drinks too much, then sooner or later they're going to become a slave to the bottle. Or that if you lie all the time, then sooner or later you're going to get caught up and you're going to get caged in your, your lies. He means something deeper and even more distressing. Think about your life. Have you ever looked at, at the anger that you have and the grudges that you hold and how you've tried to forgive and you've tried to let it go, but, but you can't? Have you ever tried to love someone like the way that God talks about it where you're not just using them as long as they make you feel happy, but you love them, and so you find joy in putting their needs ahead of your own and doing whatever they need, uh, no matter the cost. Ever try that and find out how impossible it is to do that all the time? Or have you struggled with a sin in your life? And it, it got to the point where you just finally said, you know what, this is it. I am done with this. It is time to to put behind that, that gossip, that jealousy, and that lust, and then you were terrified to find out that you couldn't do it. I didn't know I was a slave until I found out I couldn't do what I wanted to. But when Jesus says, everyone who sins is a slave to sin, there's a promise behind that. It's not once you beat this, finally, or once you get on top of these things that have been kind of driving you like a slave driver all of your life, then you're going to be free. Instead, he says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free from it all. The truth that Jesus teaches is that you and I weren't created to to live for ourselves and to spend all of our time trying to satisfy every desire that, that we might have, even though that's what the world would say freedom is, right? Being able to do anything like that. If that's who you think you are, then you're a slave to those things. But God created us to be something completely different. In the beginning, designed to be like him, a reflection of him to love perfectly and selflessly, to be his children, to show the love of God to others just as freely as he has shown his love to us. And whenever you and I don't do that, when we fail to do that, that's not freedom. That's something that hurts us and enslaves us. And it leaves us with this this load of guilt that we spend all of our days trying to get rid of, but we can't cut ourselves loose from it and live as the people God has called us to be. The truth that, that Jesus teaches goes beyond that. He teaches that there was one pure one who came down from heaven who wasn't a slave to sin. He was the son of God. And he spent all of his days and lived all of his days as the person that God calls you and me to be. And then God took the sins of the world, all of yours and, and all of mine, past, present, and future, and put them on him. And the God of heaven looked at his perfect son and carrying all of those sins, and he had him suffer the worst that hell can give. And he died. And he was buried. But on the third day, he walked out of his grave. Because as far as God was concerned, every one of those sins and all of that guilt was gone. And in their place, he gives you Jesus' righteousness to wear. And he dresses you in his holiness. And you bear his name. 
and because of nothing that you've done, but purely because God in his grace chose to adopt you and to give you his spirit, he looks at you and he calls you his child. Jesus says, when you hold on to that, you're not just holding on to, to words from a book that was written down some time ago, but you're holding on to freedom. Your sins are gone. When you fall into sin again and you come before God confessing them, when he sees you, he doesn't see those sins defining you anymore. He sees that you are defined by Jesus' righteousness because as Jesus says, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. So what does that freedom look like? There's a story told about Abraham Lincoln before he was ever president when he was a young lawyer. And the story goes that, that he found out there was a slave auction in his town. And so he wanted to go to kind of see what happened at, at one of those. And so he did, and he saw men and women and children chained up like cattle and being sold off to the highest bidder. And during the auction, a, a young woman was brought forward to, to be sold. And Lincoln found himself bidding on her. And then he got outbid, but then he, he bid higher, and he kept on bidding because he didn't want somebody else to buy her. And then finally the auctioneer pronounced sold. And this woman was brought over to him as his slave. And he bent down, they say, and undid her chains and said, you're free. And she looked at him and said, what does it mean to be free? And he told her, it means that you can do whatever you want and, and go wherever you want. And she said, I want to go with you. If the sun sets you free, then you're free indeed. And we say, Jesus, I want to go with you. I want to follow you. I want to be your disciple. And he says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. To be Jesus' disciple, he doesn't give you a checklist of things that you need to do or what you need to become. He says, you stay inside my teaching. And holding to Jesus' words, that's not slavery to words in a book. It's the freedom of walking with your Savior as the child of God that you've been called to be. And it's not just our Lutheran heritage, things that Lutherans do. It's the Christian's hope, walking with our God as he leads us to himself in heaven. And it's not just a duty that each one of us has, but it's a delight that God gives to us as we see his truth each and every day. Let that be your delight. Because every word of Jesus is going to lead you to the same truth, that you are forgiven and you're loved by God. And you are not defined by this heavy burden of the worst things that you've ever done. And you're not saved by, by finding confidence in the best things that you've ever tried to do. And you're certainly not a slave. As God's child, forgiven and loved by him, you're free. But God bless you as you go with him, as you hold to his word and you stand in your freedom. Amen. We continue now with the prayer of the church. Almighty and eternal God, when the set time had come, you sent your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to take our place under the demands of the law and endure the just punishment for our sins. You raised him from death in glorious splendor, and for his sake, you richly and daily forgive sins. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his 
When the set time had come, you poured out your spirit on your people and called them to proclaim the gospel to every creature. Equipped and encouraged, they carried the story of salvation to all the world. When the set time had come, you raised up your servant Martin Luther to destroy the idols of the medieval age and to restore the pure teaching of the scriptures. You granted power and success to the proclamation of the gospel, and your holy church grew and prospered throughout the world. When the set time had come, you made our fathers bold to take their stand on the truth of your word. Guided by your spirit, they joined hands and hearts under the shared confession and with a determined resolve to work together in the ministry. You have blessed their sons and daughters and enabled us to preserve and proclaim the saving gospel of your son. Let this be the time when you renew us again by word and sacrament, when you reform our hearts and minds, and when you restore to us the joy of fellowship and service. Grant to us in this age and in this place the courage of the apostles, the steadfastness of the reformers, and the dedication of the fathers of our church's past. Let this be a time to imitate the kind-hearted souls in our church who served the sick, helped the disabled, and cared for the abandoned, and comforted the dying. Provide occasions to serve them and times to pray for them. Keep all of your children in your powerful and gracious care. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Let this time and all our times be used to give thanks for your grace in Christ and to praise you for calling us into your mission to save. Please stand. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should give thanks to you, Almighty Father. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for you have kept your word and kept your people in your word, so that the gates of hell shall not prevail, nor your gospel be silenced by error or deceit. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. 
We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, and we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. May this true body and blood strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, O God, our refuge and our strength, you raised up servants to reform and renew your church in the light of your living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Defend and purify the church in our day and grant that we may boldly proclaim Christ's faithfulness until death and his vindicating resurrection. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We close with our final hymn, hymn 640. Please remain standing. seated. Well, glad you could join us this morning. Um, if you haven't yet, fill out your, your Connect card. Um, just a few announcements. Um, you are always welcome to join us in our Bible study Sundays at 930, community room. We're looking at 1 Thessalonians, the Christian counterculture. Uh, next, next weekend, after all of our services, the winter gear distribution for those in need, need I believe that's, is that wrapping up? Yes. So that is before and after the service there. Um, and then third, I actually have a little tack on one. Uh, the Scholastic Book Fair next Sunday will be between the services. School families will have the opportunity to shop during the following week as well. So looking forward to that. And then finally, um, just a tack on announcement, um, Amanda Gladowski, who is their K-5 teacher, uh, she just received a call to, to teach at St. Philip's uh, in Milwaukee. Uh, so continue to keep her in your prayers and St. John's in her prayer and also St. Philip's in your prayers as well. I think that's all, all the announcements I have. Thank you to all participating, singing, and uh, leading us musically as well. God's blessings on the rest of your week. Mm -hmm.